This is a brief presentation on what happened to Bitcoin and what is Bitcoin SV. Come with me as I take you on a journey down the Bitcoin rabbit hole. The Bitcoin white paper was first released to the world to a cryptographic mailing list on the 31st of October 2008 and was entitled Bitcoin, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system. And this was the first time that blockchain technology had been revealed to the world. The name Satoshi Nakamoto has a meaning in Japanese. Satoshi means guidance and Nakamoto means inner source. But in Japan, it's reversed, so it's Nakamoto Satoshi, meaning guidance inner source. So it could be viewed as a message translating to guidance from inner source. The Bitcoin white paper contained all the information that anybody would need to start the network themselves. The point of it being released on the 31st of October 2008 was to create a common and reasonable opportunity for anyone and everybody to start the network themselves, which gave the network credibility and classified it as a commodity. After a reasonable amount of time and a reasonable opportunity had been provided for anyone to start the network, Satoshi Nakamoto eventually started the network himself under a pseudonym on the 3rd of January 2009. This divided the starting point into two separate entities, the white paper being written in English and released to the Western world, and the author himself being a Japanese pseudonym. On the 3rd of January 2009, the Bitcoin Genesis block was first created that contained a message in the Times newspaper that read, Chancellor on brink of second bailout for banks. The Genesis block contained 50 Bitcoin, which is the foundation data of the network. Once the Genesis block had been created, it meant that other mining operations could then join the network to compete with each other for the digital assets that the system had programmed within it. Data was then added to the network and all linked together, meaning that no data on the network could be cracked, hacked, altered, changed or deleted, because each bit of data was assigned a hash number that was created from the previous bit of data that was first uploaded onto the network. The network foundations grow in strength as the central starting point continues to be diluted over time, as the ledger becomes more diluted and the volume of competition increases. The network also grows in strength as it increases in size, because more and more people have an economic incentive to keep the network running. In one of his earliest messages, Satoshi Nakamoto wrote back in 2009, the existing Visa credit card network processes around 15 million internet purchases per day worldwide. Bitcoin can already scale much larger than that with existing hardware for a fraction of the cost. It never really hits a scaling ceiling. However, one of the very first technology experts that Satoshi Nakamoto communicated with was a person called Hal Finney. Hal Finney passed away on the 28th of August 2014 and is famous for posting out this tweet saying, running Bitcoin on the 11th of January 2009. However, it is suspected that Hal Finney was a CIA operative. Hal downloaded the Bitcoin software the day it was released and received 10 Bitcoins from Nakamoto in the world's first Bitcoin transaction on the 12th of January 2009. It was Hal Finney that persuaded Satoshi Nakamoto to initially put the one megabyte block cap in place. Because the CIA didn't know how to stop this thing and wasn't sure what it was, all they knew was that they needed to restrict it. And by having a one megabyte block cap in place meant that they gave themselves time to do this. The CIA and the Illuminati are famous for protecting the US dollar's status as the world reserve currency. And so don't take kindly about a technology that may surpass this. The CIA and Illuminati use the all-seeing eye symbol to indicate to their members who they are. We can see here the Illuminati symbol and the all-seeing eye plastered all over a BTC ATM machine. Bitcoin was created with five elements that make it a digital commodity. It is created with a fixed supply, so no one can change it and no one controls it. It's created with a locked protocol, again, so no one can change it and no one controls it. It was created with unbounded scaling, so that limitations and restrictions couldn't be manufactured and therefore the system couldn't be manipulated. It was created with economic competition because without competition you simply get collusion and central control. And finally it was also created with a chain of digital signatures for common accountability so no one could do anything on the network that nobody else would know about. But because it is a commoditized system with no single central point of authority control or failure it means that it's vulnerable 
and therefore has to be protected by patents. And the company that has the most blockchain technology patents by far is a company called Enchain. And the chief scientist at that company is Dr. Craig Stephen Wright. So let's find out some more about him. The earliest reference to Dr. Craig Wright with regard to Bitcoin was found in the Tulip Trust document that was written by David Kleiman. In it, Dave Kleiman wrote, I acknowledge the trust and the transfer of Bitcoin to the trust. I have full control of all software and the keys used to manage Bitcoin as of this date, Thursday, the 9th of June, 2011. It is agreed that I, David Kleiman, shall become the trustee for the transfer of the Satoshi I have received from Craig Wright. No record of this transaction will be filed in the US or Australia. The transfer is valued at $100,000 US for Australian tax purposes. I acknowledge I, Dave Kleiman, have received 1,100,111 Bitcoin from Craig Wright. At the time of transfer, the value is around $100,000 US. I will form a trust to be managed by at least three people, but no more than seven at any time. All Bitcoin will be returned to Dr. Wright on the 1st of January 2020. The very first article that ever exposed Dr. Craig Wright as potentially the creator of Bitcoin was published on the 8th of December 2015 by Wired magazine titled Is Bitcoin's Creator This Unknown Australian Genius? And then they presented an article called The Evidence, which outlined all the evidence that they dug up on him that proved that he was the creator of Bitcoin and the man behind the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto. The following day, Gizmodo magazine did the same on the 9th of December 2015, publishing an article saying, here's all the evidence that Craig Wright invented Bitcoin. And on the back of these articles, on the 12th of December 2015, the police raided his home. Then the following year, on the 2nd of May 2016, The Economist wrote an article titled, Craig Stephen Wright claims to be Satoshi Nakamoto. Is he? And on the same day, the BBC also released an article titled, Australian Craig Wright claims to be Bitcoin creator. Gavin Andreessen, who created the Bitcoin Foundation along with John Matonis, also released an article on the 2nd of May 2016 saying, Satoshi, I believe Craig Wright is the person who invented Bitcoin. John Matonis also released an independent article saying, how I met Satoshi. On the 28th of June 2021, London's High Court grants Dr. Craig Wright via default judgment copyright ownership of the white paper as the defendant, Cobra, opted not to defend the claim. And on the 6th of December 2021, a Florida jury found that Dr. Craig Wright did not owe half of 1.1 million bitcoins to the family of David Kleiman. In a court case that saw Ira Kleiman as the personal representative of the estate of Dave Kleiman, the plaintiff versus Craig Wright, the defendant. The following day, newspapers published articles on the case. The Times wrote, Bitcoin founder Craig Wright wins battle to keep his crypto billions. And The Guardian also published an article titled, Australian man Craig Wright wins US court battle for Bitcoin fortune worth billions. Sending Bitcoin is like sending a contract of value. And like any contract, a contract requires signatures in order to validate it. Without a valid signature, our contract is null and void, and the contract must contain the two signatures of the trading parties. And in the same way that a contract doesn't have any value when it doesn't have any signatures signed, Bitcoin also doesn't have any value when the transaction doesn't contain a digital signature with it. So to destroy the economic value and contractual credibility of Bitcoin, all you need to do is segregate the digital signatures from the transaction data. And this is exactly what happened on the 24th of August 2017 when a group of developers implemented what they said was a software upgrade called SegWit. SegWit segregated the digital signatures from the transaction data, meaning those signatures are now centrally controlled and blame could be reassigned. 
But more importantly, because the data now no longer has digital signatures attached to the data, it means that the developers who control the network are responsible for it. And that is a company called Blockstream. Blockstream have intentionally removed all the economic value from BTC and removed all its contractual credibility. And the purpose of this was simply to protect the US dollar as the world's reserve currency. They've also encouraged the populace to put the majority of their money into BTC with the promise of never-ending inflated returns. When all they've really done is pump the price of BTC with their own worthless cryptocurrency called Tether which is meant to be pegged to the US dollar one to one. However, the US dollar also has no value. So, unless a transaction has a digital signature attached to it that holds the sender of that transaction accountable for the data within it, it's economically worthless. So this is a diagram that illustrates what's happened to Bitcoin behind the scenes. Bitcoin started on the 3rd of January 2009 with the Genesis block being created and it had the ticker symbol BTC. However, the protocol was changed on the 24th of August 2017 when SegWit segregated the digital signatures from the network, removing all economic value and contractual credibility. However, this alternative protocol kept the ticker symbol BTC and people still referred to it as Bitcoin when it was economically worthless. Another group of developers then also tried to alter the protocol by deleting and scrambling signatures, which again centralized the network and removed accountability of all the developers who were controlling it. So the original protocol and genuine Bitcoin still exists, but it just has the ticker symbol BSV. So earlier transactions, like the one that happened on the 22nd of May 2010 for two pizzas, now known as Bitcoin Pizza Day, is valid. However, any transactions going through the SegWit protocol that was implemented on the 24th of August 2017 are now economically worthless. And the people who have done this seem to be associated with the Rockefeller Foundation. As he said in his secret covenant, we will establish a money system that will imprison them forever, keeping them and their children in debt. Bitcoin is the only way that we get out of this totalitarian one world government system, which is why they've corrupted it. And this concludes our journey down the Bitcoin rabbit hole. The original protocol and genuine Bitcoin is simply Bitcoin SV. The description includes a link to JD Rockefeller's secret covenant. Also another video called Shining a Light on Sovereign Electronic Cash, a farmer's food supply and money video, and a documentary called Silverfish.